know, the, 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 most, the most influential people, the people we all look up to in life, are the people who accomplish whatever they set out to because they don't accept limitations, right? Things are difficult and they go, okay, this is difficult and I'm gonna keep going anyway because this is what I chose to do. Uh, sometimes there's a real reason to end your fast early, but usually there isn't. Uh, in most cases there isn't. So if you came here to fast for 21 days or 30 days or 45 days, you can probably do that. And if you want to get as much benefit as possible from this process, you're going to want to do that um, because it's going to be amazingly powerful for you if you hang in there and do this correctly. So we're, what we're going to talk about today is what that looks like, right? How to, this is an orientation, so it's really about what you should be and perhaps should not be doing during this time. Um, how to, and really it's all about how each of you can leave here having gotten as much benefit as possible. Because that's all we're interested in, okay? We want you to go out and get as healthy as you can. Um, that's our goal, that's our only goal. Everything that we're doing here is with that goal in mind. Please keep that in mind, okay? Um, some of you are gonna get weak by the end of your process. Now, what's, what's gonna happen, and we'll, we'll come back to this, but you, you are gonna lose some muscle during the process, there's no way to avoid that. Don't worry about that. Um, by the time you're done, if you're doing this correctly, your body is gonna be so much more efficient that you're gonna build muscle more easily than ever before, okay? So don't worry about whatever you lose, it doesn't amount to that much, and you're gonna rebuild it easily. But sometimes people get pretty weak. In most sessions, by the end of the session, I'm carrying somebody back and forth to their room. Okay, hopefully it's not gonna be Avi. Because <laughs> if it is, I resign. Um, usually, usually what happens, fortunately for me, is that uh, big, big people are strong. And it's usually someone who's already pretty small and, and often doesn't have a lot of muscle mass that gets, you know, everyone's gonna get weaker. So if you start out with less muscle, you're gonna wind up being weaker than someone who starts with much more, okay? So it's, it, but you know, if it happens to you, it's okay. I'd be glad to, to help you get back and forth or the staff will. Um, but you know, keep in mind, your goal is to rest as completely as you can. That's paramount. Now, that's gonna be difficult for some of you to do. And, we're, and we'll come back to that. But, but that, I want you to keep in mind, that's the purpose. Every one of you, either you're here to heal something, to take your health to a new level, um, as you said, prevention, you know, whatever it's about, if you want to leave here, how many of you would like to leave here with as much benefit as possible? <laughs> Maybe, be, is there anybody that, that wants to waste money and not get as much as they can from the experience? No, so rest as completely as you can. Okay, and we'll come back and talk about what that means a little bit later. Um, so I'm gonna encourage you not to bathe any more often than you need to. Now some of you are used to bathing every day, some of you are used to bathing a couple times a day. Um, here in the tropics, that's what most people do. They bathe in the morning, they bathe again in the evening before they go to bed. I'm gonna encourage you not to bathe any more often than you need to because it uses a lot of energy. And, and most of you are gonna to start to notice that when you take a shower, you get out and you feel tired afterward. Okay, that's why. You have a washcloth, a little towel, you can wet that, hit your underarms anywhere else you need to. That uses a lot less energy, you know, standing in front of the sink. But I'm gonna encourage you not to, to bathe any more often than you really need to. Um, personal care products. You wanna avoid using personal care products as much as you can, okay? That means you're welcome to brush your teeth, but use a wet toothbrush, no toothpaste. Okay, the toothpaste will stick to your tongue. We have a lot of Americans here this time. We don't usually have so many people from the US or people who sound like they're from the US. Um, if, if you're in the US, I don't know about every other country, you have things like Colgate and Crest. Did you know that by law it must say on the box, the law requires them to print on the box, do not swallow. Anybody guess why it says that? Yeah, it's poisonous. Okay, don't put this crap in your mouth. All right, you should never use it, but definitely not while you're fasting. Okay, there are better brands, there are some natural brands, but still, I, I wouldn't put the stuff in my mouth, okay? Similarly, uh, shampoo, deodorant, all these things, I would avoid using definitely nothing scented. No perfume, no cologne, no scented products. 
you guys are going to become very sensitive, hypersensitive to everything, to sound, to smell, to everything. Okay? So please, nothing scented. No, uh, nothing on your, on your skin. If you're willing to, I put nothing on your skin. Okay, I would never use sunscreen lotion, by the way. Say again? You can wear a hat, as long as it's not entirely made of sunscreen. <laughs> if it's made of cloth, that's okay. Um, most of you probably know that we have no Wi-Fi. Okay, it's not an accident. It's not something you need to fix. Um, it's not okay to, to broadcast from your laptop out here because that signal affects everyone, okay? We're trying to offer people a, an environment that's actually free of that kind of radiation. And I don't know if you're aware of it, but this radiation is actually quite harmful, okay? It causes cancer, all right? So definitely stay away. In fact, anyone who's dealing with cancer think they might be, you might want to stay away from the, the computers and the internet as much as you can. Now, I realize many of you here have a business, right? And if you have a business, you may need to get online sometimes. If you have a family that's not here with you, you might want to get online sometimes. That's fine. The idea is to spend as little time online as possible so you can do what you need to. Again, it's not okay to sit there and watch videos. That's not going to work. It's not going to help you. And you're going to be taking space that maybe somebody else needs to actually do something useful. Okay? Um, not that there aren't useful videos. Most of you are probably here because you saw my videos. Uh, I, think, I think that's useful, but you don't need to do that while you're here. This is about resting as completely as you can. Looking at anything, it's taking energy. Stand, sitting in front of a computer screen, it's taking a lot of energy from you, okay? What we're trying to do is conserve as much energy as possible so your body can use that energy to cleanse and heal, okay? Does that make sense to everyone? Yes. So ideally what you want to do is find a comfortable place to sit you know, recline a little bit if you can. It's, if you're lying down, it's hard to drink water. But if you can sit, you know, in a reclined position and sip water all day long from when you wake up until when, you know, well, until till you're done. Um, we're gonna see each day how much water you need. Okay, you can't do this based on your thirst. Unfortunately, that's not reliable. Okay, as we get dehydrated, we lose touch with that. You can't rely on that. I mean, we see people all the time who think they're drinking enough water and they're severely dehydrated. So what we're going to do is we're going to be interpreting your daily vital signs to see whether you're getting the water you need or not. I can't tell you how much you need today. I can tell you whether what you did yesterday was enough or not. And we'll go from there. So what I'm going to ask you each to do is to keep track of how much water you're drinking. Okay? You can count glasses. It might be the easiest way. Most of you are going to be using, may, may I, yeah. uh, a glass like this. You know, all these tall glasses are roughly 16 ounces for the Americans, r just under 500 milliliters for, for people from everywhere else on the planet. Um, if we know how many of those you drank, then we can see what happened. Then I can make a recommendation based on your results. If you have no idea how much you drank, I don't know what to tell you. If I say drink more and you don't know what you had yesterday, that doesn't really help you, okay? So it'd be really helpful if you can keep track of how much you're drinking. Um, if you have your own container, that's okay. However, you're better off drinking out of glass than plastic. Okay, I'm not suggesting that's plastic. I don't know what it is. But um, plastic is always breaking down. And if you can avoid plastic, I would. Okay. Keep in mind, you want to be very careful about how much sun you get, okay? Now, this isn't about how much sun your skin can handle, okay? We have several people here that have fairly dark skin and several people here that maybe they have no problem handling a ton of tropical sun. And tropical sun, by the way, is intense. But it's not just that. If, A, if you overheat your body, your body's going to spend energy trying to cool itself down. That's energy that's not available to cleanse and heal. Okay, you're wasting energy. Uh, and B, if you are sweating, you are losing electrolytes. Okay, that's fine if you're eating, but the only electrolytes you're taking in or whatever might happen to be in the spring water and they might not be the ones you need. So we wanna, we wanna jealously guard our electrolytes while fasting. Okay, you can't take anything except water. 
or you're not fasting. Some of you are aware there are people out there telling you, oh no, take sodium and potassium. That, oh, it's a lot easier that way. You know why? Because not very much is happening. Okay, it's not actually fasting. It's a different process if your body sees nutrients. Okay, what happens, all the beneficial changes that occur, occur in the absence of calories and nutrients. Now, that probably sounds a little crazy to some of you. How many of you know Rumi? Personally? I, you look really good for your age. Yeah. That's what I've been called. That's what yeah. I've Because Rumi lived like a thousand years ago or something. This is one of my favorites. I read that poem. This yeah. It's so uh, Rumi was considered the most prolific poet who ever lived. He writes mostly about love and nature. But this one's called Fasting. And what he said was, there's hidden sweetness in the stomach's emptiness. We are lutes, no more, no less. If the sound box is stuffed full of anything, no music. But if the brain, brain and belly are burning clean with fasting, every moment a new song comes out of the fire. The fog clears and a new energy makes you run up the steps in front of you. Be emptier and cry like reed instruments cry. Emptier, write secrets with the reed pen. When you're full of food and drink, an ugly metal statue sits where your spirit should. When you fast, good habits gather like friends who want to help. Fasting is Solomon's ring. Don't give it to some illusion and lose your power. But even if you have, if you've lost all will and control, they come back when you fast. Like soldiers appearing out of the ground, penance flying above them. A table descends to your tents, Jesus' table. Expect to see it when you fast. This table spread with other food, better than the broth of cabbages. So I share that with you for a couple of reasons. Um, first of all, it's not that hard to be better than the broth of cabbages, I think. But um, there, there are two things here that I wanted to point out. One, when Rumi wrote this poem, some, I think it was around 800 years ago, I don't think people were saying, fasting? What are you talking about? Right? What do you eat when you're, they don't say that, right? What do you eat when you're fasting? How many of you have heard that? What are you going to be eating? Right? Um, people understood fasting, okay? But fasting has been lost to our culture, to human culture. And so, um, you know, it's important to understand this is something that people used to know, people used to practice, okay? Uh, how many of you know Hippocrates? You also look very good for your age. Uh, Hippocrates was considered the first Western physician um, from Greece. And everyone's probably, everyone here is probably familiar with, with two of his most famous quotes. The first was co-opted by Western conventional allopathic medicine, right? It says, first, do no harm, right? Unfortunately, they kind of forgot about that. Mm -hmm. We'll come back to this idea, but some of you may already be aware that medicine and, and well-meaning doctors kill more people than anything besides cancer and heart disease. So I know some of you, right, some of you have people back home, your people, who think you're crazy and suicidal and this is dangerous and stupid, etc. The fact is this is a lot safer than going to a hospital. You have a much better chance of surviving this, nearly 100%. Uh, chances are less, far less that good if you go to a hospital, okay? Um, the second thing, though, Rumi said something interesting. He said, uh, there's hidden sweetness in the stomach's emptiness, okay? At some point, some of you are gonna come to me and say, my stomach feels empty. Just so you know, I'm gonna tell you, there's hidden sweetness in the stomach's emptiness, okay? Um, you know, we're so used to walking around with a full belly that it feels strange and maybe not okay when it's, when it's not full. It should be not full. It should be empty most of the time. Okay, it's gonna be getting there very soon. It's not a problem, all right? Just, just so you know. All right, um, so Hippocrates, the second quote, anyone know what it is? It's like, let uh, food be that medicine, and like medicine be that food. That's right. Let your food be your medicine, your medicine your food. I'm updating it. No <laughs> buys. Um, right? And of course, the poem and Hippocrates' quotes were translated from other languages anyway. So, uh, let your food be your medicine, let your medicine be your food. Does anyone know what his very next words were? Because people use this quote 
to, to say you should take herbs. He's saying eat medicinal plants. Is that what he's saying? His next words were, he, what he said, the whole quote was, let your food be your medicine, let your medicine be your food, but to feed yourself when you're already sick is to feed your sickness. What, what was Hippocrates really saying? You should do what? Fast. You should fast when you're sick. And that's what he did with his patients. Okay? And some of you are going to find out, I don't have any patients. Um, all right. So, fasting has been around forever. Okay? 25 million species all fast when they're sick enough or badly enough injured. This is what happens in nature every day. How many of you have seen this happen? Cat, dog, horse, giraffe. Giraffe? You got a giraffe at home? Okay. It, every species on the planet will do this. It doesn't matter what it is. This is nature's way of allowing the organism to cleanse and heal. The organism only cleanses and heals the organism. Only the organism can heal the organism. Okay? Is that clear to everyone? Clear. I mean, th this, I know this, this flies directly in the face of what some of you have been doing and believing. Okay? Some of you have probably heard before that a raw vegan diet will heal your body. Okay? Will a raw vegan diet heal your body? No. No. Some of you probably heard that juices will heal your body. Is that true? How about herbs? No. I was in, uh, I think it was, it was um, Belfast, Ireland, several years ago, speaking. And I said to a group of people there, there's only one thing on this planet that can heal your body. And a woman raised her hand and said, you? <laughs> it's not me, okay? I can't heal your body, okay? No one else can heal you. No person, no thing. Your body can heal itself. And the point of fasting is to get out of the way so that your body can put all of its energy and intelligence into the process of cleansing and healing, processes of cleansing and healing. Does that make sense to everyone? Mm -hmm. Okay? So you want to keep that in mind, right? The body is a self-healing organism just like every other organism. All we're trying to do is get out of its way as much as we can. And this is why it's so important that you do as little as you can, right? So when I say resting, I'm talking about reading all day and watching videos. That's resting, right? Not really, no. Okay, you're using energy. In fact, just having your eyes open, okay? You've got 60,000 bits of information hitting your brain every second. Okay, roughly 60% of your brain lights up when your eyes are open, processing visual information. Close your eyes and everything slows down. Heart rate, respiratory rate, brain waves, so ideally, as much as you can, you want to rest comfortably, eyes closed, sip water. Okay, if you don't know where your mouth is yet, you can open them. It's okay if you need to, to drink. But you, as much as you can, you want to rest with your eyes closed, right? How many of you, I see a pair of glasses over there. I see a pair over here, one here. Uh, how many of you wear glasses or lenses? Is anyone here wearing contact lenses? Ooh, no, no, no. They're so, going out today. If, yeah, you got to take those contact lenses out. Now, did you bring glasses too? Yeah. Okay, good. So, contact lenses, first of all, we've got a mucous membrane that needs to breathe. Mm -hmm. I know they say they're breathable. Mm -hmm. Bullshit. Okay, it's not the same. I, personally, I think it's always a bad idea. But especially now, in order to heal your eyes. In fact, let me show me again how many of you wear, have corrected vision, lenses or contacts or, or glasses. Okay. Um, for how many of you that just raised your hand, did your vision begin to get better when you started wearing glasses? Raise your hand high. Get, I, get them higher because I can't see them. Where are they? Mm -hmm. Where are those hands? It doesn't happen. When we start wearing glasses, our vision gets worse. Every year or two, you need a stronger pair of glasses. Okay? When we give the body a crutch, the body will become dependent on the crutch. What you want to do now is keep the glasses or lenses off as much as you can and keep your eyes closed so your eyes can actually begin to heal because your eyes can heal, okay? They will heal. Most of you are gonna leave here and are going to need a weaker prescription than you came with, okay? If you keep your eyes closed and rest them as much as you can. That's how you're gonna maximize healing, okay? The same is true with everything, right? 
you know, it, in order for something to heal, you have to be resting it. So we had a woman here last session who had a, a bad leg, and she's going out walking every day. I'm like, what are you doing? Okay, how is your leg going to heal if you keep using it? It doesn't happen that way. Yeah, but it, but it feels worse if I, if I rest. Anybody want to guess why that might be? It's actually healing. And that's one of the things that means is inflammation. Inflammation is not the enemy. Okay, your body, your virtually infinitely intelligent body, brings blood to the area on purpose to allow it to heal. So you'll hear more about this over these next three, four, five, six, eight, nine weeks, whatever it is you're going to be here. Um, in the last, well, I guess, I guess the first one was, was probably 40 years ago. But uh, since then, I, I have now broken seven fingers, two of them twice, two toes, two ribs, both knees, and my right hip. Okay? In no case since I understood this, which is most of those breaks, in no case have I used ice or heat or taken any drugs to reduce inflammation. Inflammation is not the enemy. Okay, what we want the body to do is whatever it needs to do in order to heal. And the healing in every case has been incredibly fast. Like, blow you away fast. And later on, over these next weeks, I'll share some of those stories with you. Okay? I mean, much faster than medicine says is possible. Okay. Now, what, what, what I did do in each case was stop eating. By, by not forcing my body to have to process food, it has a lot more energy to heal. Okay? So what you're going to want to do is understand that the symptoms that arise are evidence your body's doing what it needs to. But if, if you've got something going on and you're worried about it, talk to me. Okay? Just understand that the symptoms are evidence your body's cleansing or healing. They're not the problem, okay? So if you come to me and say, hey, my ankle's swollen, what should I do? I'm gonna say, you should get off of it. And that's it, nothing else. We don't wanna interfere with your body's processes. We wanna allow your body to do everything it needs to do. Uh, clean water, we have amazing, incredible water here, spring water. Um, it's completely untreated. We have it tested every few months. It's virtually always perfect. Uh, anyone see a video saying our water was acidic? I saw it. Not, not true. Um, we have it tested professionally regularly. It's amazing. Usually between 6.8 and 7.2. And, you know, about as clean as you could get in every way. Um, I love the water. When you're done here, how much water will you need? It's going to be not much different than what you need fasting, at least for a while because your bodies are gonna to have to continue cleaning out some garbage and then rehydrating, okay? So eventually it will go down quite a bit, but it's probably gonna take most at least a couple of months or more to get to that point. So for a while you're gonna to need to continue to sip quite a bit of water, okay? Sipping, by the way, is, I can tell you this, I mean, until I see your vital signs, I can't comment on how much you need because it's gonna vary. But I can tell you that very few people are gonna be okay with less than four liters a day. And for the Americans, uh, a liter is a little bit more than a quart. So let's just say a gallon of water, okay? This, this is a quart, roughly a liter. This is actually a liter, but you know, it's, it's, we're talking about just a little more than one ounce difference between a liter and a quart. A uh, quart's 32, a liter's 33 point something. So most you're gonna need to drink at least four of these. But, and this is critically important, okay? You must take the water in slowly. You must take it in slowly. Okay, why is that? Well, when we drink water, it goes into the stomach, goes into the small intestine, and it's absorbed right through the wall of the small intestine into the bloodstream. Imagine for a second that we got a half full pitcher. Imagine this represents my bloodstream, and I'm able to double the volume in my bloodstream. What would you call me if I could do that? Dead. I'd be dead. Okay, why? because I would have diluted my electrolytes by 50%. And that means they no longer conduct electricity and you cease to be alive, okay? So, now that's not gonna happen unless you try really hard. But, if you drink too quickly, if you drink faster than your kidneys can process water, you're going to be losing electrolytes. And again, you don't have any way to replace them. 
until you begin eating, except for whatever might happen to be here. So we want to be sure to take the water in slowly, okay? You're, theoretically, two healthy kidneys can process one liter an hour. Let me be clear. I don't want anyone to drink more than half that much. Okay, one glass per hour. That's it. But sip slowly over the course of the hour because it's the pace that matters. In other words, if, if it's 500 mils or 16 ounces per hour, then it's 250 mils or eight ounces in 30 minutes and 125 or four ounces in 15 minutes and 67 and a half, whatever it is, um, in, you know, et cetera, et cetera, right? Take it down so that you're, what I'm talking about is really sipping, you know, between 30 and 60 times per hour, little tiny sips. Someone insisted this morning, asked me like, not here, someone I'm working with on Skype, asked me like five, six times, yeah, but how many ounces is each sip? No, it's a fraction of an ounce each sip. It's a little tiny bit. Okay, it's just a little tiny bit of water over and over again because that way your body can actually use the water and you're not peeing it all away. If you drink it fast, you're just going to pee more often. If your hobby is peeing, then <laughs> that's good, but the problem is you're losing electrolytes every time. Yeah. So if, if, I, if I start like feeling thirsty, should I try to like um, not to still try to you, you, still need, you still need to be yeah. sipping. So yeah. just ignore the thirst. No, don't ignore the thirst. Oh. Meet the thirst by sipping. Yeah. Okay, so you sip, you rest. You can sip again right away, oh, okay. but, should, but little tiny bits each time. Okay. You, know, you do not want to be tipping it back and drinking a bunch of ounces at one time. That's faster your kidneys can process it. Okay, I mean, it's, it, your sleep is likely to be affected, many of you are going to be affected. Many of you are going to have to wake up to pee a lot. Some of you are going to have trouble falling asleep or staying asleep. That's going to happen because your body will detoxify more rapidly at night than it does during the day. That's just what happens. So don't worry about that. By the time you're done refeeding, most of you are going to feel amazing. Okay, you're going to feel amazing. You're going to recover. You're going to feel fantastic. In the meantime, it's probably going to be affected a little bit. But don't try to, to dampen that effect by drinking less water. Drink what you need to. Pee whenever, whenever you need to. Uh, and I'm going to make it easier for you guys. Um, you might already know the story, Alan. We met in Denver this past summer. And the, the, I was in Denver because a client invited me and organized events for me there in three cities. And he's, he's a guy who was 62 when he fasted here last year, has a prostate issue, uh, which means already urine flow is restricted. He was literally waking up 15 times a night to pee. I can almost guarantee you, you're going to wake up less than that. So feel blessed. So um, we just, like, we don't drink water when, when we're in bed, basically? Or no, you, you can drink water when you're in bed. I mean, okay. if it's possible to get all the water in from the time you wake up until 6 or, you know, six or 7 p.m., you can get it all in, that's great, because then you will probably wake up less often. But some of you won't be able to do that. You might need to be drinking later. And when you wake up to pee, your mouth might feel dry, right? This is likely to change, by the way. That effect is going to increase over this next week. Okay, it's going to take four or five days for the old material to really be broken down enough to be absorbing a bunch of water. And that means you're going to need more water then than you do now because it's going to be absorbing more. So you're going to, you know, some of you are going to say, I, I, I'm, I drank four liters and my mouth is dry. A, four liters is not the right amount. Four liters is the amount at which almost no one's okay with less than that. Some of you are going to need six or seven liters a day. Mm. And I can't tell you who that's going to be until we actually see your numbers every day. Okay? Theoretically, theoretically, two healthy kidneys could process 24 liters a day if you never slept. But I don't want anyone to drink more than half that much. Okay? And that, that's, again, that's if you never slept 24 hours a day. So no one's going to need 12 liters. Okay? Most are going to be okay with, with six. Some of you might need a little more than that. All right, what we won't know, we'll just have to see what happens. All right, other questions? About the resting issue, or not issue, but anyway, about resting during yep. the day. Like, do you really want us to just lay down and close our eyes all day long? And, you know, and sit and that kind of thing? Well, let me say it this way. Um, you know, I, what I want for you is that you get as much benefit as you want from the process. Mm -hmm. So you might want to do that. 
It's not that I want it. It's that you're going to get more benefit if you're resting as completely as you can. All day long. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Then, How many of you have seen a, a cat or a dog fasting to, to heal itself? Anyone see this? What did the cat or dog do? Literally stayed in the same spot. Literally didn't move. Yeah. yeah. What did the cat or dog do? Same thing. Nothing. Didn't move. Didn't move. Didn't move. Okay. The best you could do would be to stay in one place and not move. It doesn't mean you can't do anything. But the point is, if you understand that the goal is to rest as completely as possible, you can move yourself in that direction. Okay? If you think, if you don't understand that, you think, well, I, I, I still have energy. I'm going to walk around. You're taking energy from the processes of cleansing and healing. I have plenty of energy. I'm going to watch videos all day. You're taking a lot of energy from the processes of cleansing and healing. Okay? Anything else you're doing is taking energy away. We have a yoga studio. Um, you guys are welcome to, to use it to go in there and sit and watch us do yoga. No. Uh, you, you can use the space for gentle stretching. You can use it for meditation. Again, you don't want to do anything strenuous at all. If you're sweating, you're losing electrolytes. Okay? You should not be practicing yoga other than restorative yoga postures. Corpse pose, you can do that all day long for the rest of your life, uh, if you like. Uh, child's pose, you know, these things are fine. But no, please, no one-handed handstands. Okay, while you're fasting. Okay. No. Too strenuous. Okay, too strenuous. Um, and, and when you're refeeding, you're going to start to get your energy back. So some of you are going to be here refeeding for one, two, three, or more weeks. You, you've got the yoga studio, and there's, there's mats and blocks and chairs and belts in there. There's uh, exercise bars down there for doing exercises. We've got a few mountain bikes you're welcome to use. Um, we have a giant trampoline down there. We have the pool. We have probably more than three kilometers of trails on site, of stone trails on site for hiking, but not while you're fasting, while you're refeeding. Let's say you're fasting 21 days. If this is your 25th birthday, you've been on the planet for 300 months, okay? 300 months. Um, which is 1,290 weeks, I think. Um, something like that. So three weeks is less than a quarter of a percent of your life so far, if you're 25 and fasting for 21 days. Now, if you're 50 and fasting 21 days, it's less than an eighth of a percent of your life so far. So it might seem like a long time, but if you think about investing a quarter of a percent of your life to completely, and I mean dramatically shift, how you feel and function for the rest of your life, it's a pretty small investment. So if it's really challenging for you, I would do it anyway. I mean, a lot of people are gonna go, oh, it's too hard, I can't do that, and they're just gonna you know, stay busy. So that's gonna, some of you are gonna do that. That's what usually happens, okay? I'm gonna strongly encourage you to resist the temptation to do that. Rest as completely as you can. I promise you, something crazy is gonna happen. Time is a relative thing. How many of you know that time is a relative thing? Okay, it's, it's incredible how relative it can be. So here's what's gonna happen. Some of you are gonna be going, oh man, this is so slow. Like every day is painfully slow. And I promise you, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever, however long you're here for, weeks from now, you're gonna be saying, Whoa, I can't believe how fast it went. Okay, those two things are gonna coexist. Like it seems slow while you're doing it, and then when it's over, you're gonna go, wow, I can't believe it's already over. It seemed like I just got here. It happens all the time. So know in advance, it's gonna seem like it, it went really quickly by the end. Just do whatever you need to do to get through this as well as you can, because you're gonna get much more benefit. And I mean the difference is enormous. It's not a little difference, it's a huge difference. Is it, would you say it's equally um, beneficial at, at the beginning and the end, or does it get more beneficial towards the end, perhaps? Resting? The, the resting. Equally beneficial throughout the process. Yeah. So, um, I was given these antibiotics. Uh huh. Should I continue or should I stop them? No, as I'm sure I told you, you can't take any drugs while you're fasting. Okay. If anybody else is using drugs, talk to me. Okay. Yeah. Now, the, the exceptions are. The exceptions are not exceptions. Type 1 diabetics, 
need to take insulin. Insulin is a hormone. Okay, if your body can't produce it, you need to take it. Okay, that's different. It's not a drug. It's a hormone. Uh, people who have no thyroid. Now we have low thyroid function, right? That's different. But if you have no thyroid, your body cannot produce thyroid hormones. You need them. You need to take them. Okay, if you have low thyroid horm uh, function, it's entirely possible you don't need to take them, and that by not propping up your body anymore, it will start producing the hormones it needs. Okay, but if, if you've had your thyroid surgically removed, or it's been destroyed by radiation, which is what they usually do these days, you, you're probably gonna need to take those hormones. Okay, that's different. Not only is it okay to go barefoot, I, I forgot, to, I appreciate you asking the question. Um, when you're sitting here, you should be barefoot. Should be. Why? You're grounding. You're grounding, okay? Now, our floors are made uh, almost exclusively of tile or cement, concrete, and there's still some grounding that happens because we're building right on the ground here. So if your skin is connected to the floor, you're actually dissipating some of the garbage, like why, you know, all that stray crap signal in your body, electrical garbage, that's gonna leave your body. And your body's gonna start to vibrate with the rest of nature the way it should be doing. That's what happens here. That's one of the things that doesn't happen if you're like in a city, which is why I can't even imagine going to a city to heal. You need to be in nature. The, the, the evidence, the science is really clear about this. In fact, it's an amazing thing. There are studies that show even in cities, people in a hospital that have a view that includes trees in their window heal much faster than people that can't see nature. Okay, that's how powerful it is. That's how powerful our connection is. Here, where we're, we're literally ensconced in nature, it's gonna dramatically, positively affect you, as long as you do what you need to do, which means stay away from technology. If you're sitting on the computer all day, you're affecting yourself, okay? If you insist on looking for signal and being on your cell phone as much as you can, you're, you're harming yourself and you're dramatically negatively impacting the amount of benefits you get. This, you know, I, I feel very, very grateful to be able to, to guide people through this process uh, for all these years because it's amazing. You're gonna see, I mean, most you're gonna leave here with transformations, even if you came here thinking there's nothing wrong, I'm perfectly fine. You're likely to leave here finer than you've been in a long time, maybe ever, okay? Because that's what happens for most people. It's, it's truly uh, transformative for most people and I feel privileged to be able to be here with you.